Hello friends, my name is Ravi and our project for the internship was a challenge from IEEE GRSS Data Fusion Contest which was Single View Semantic Segmentation Challenge. It was held on Coda Lab and organized by IDA FTC. The objective is to predict segmentation maps for semantic classes for urban scenes from single view satellite images. An unrectified single view image is provided for each geographical type. We need to predict and semantic label in each image. The training set contained 2783 images which was taken by Worldview 3 satellite of each size 1024 cross 1024 pixel together with corresponding 2D semantic segmentation images of same size. The validation set includes 50 validation images without ground truth of same semantic label. You must be wondering what is semantic segmentation? Well, semantic segmentation describes the process of associating each pixel of an image with a class label such as flower, person, road, sky, ocean or car. Application of semantic segmentation include autonomous driving. So this was a very interesting problem given by Coda Labs. What we did was we tried two fully convolutional neural networks for the set problem. The two basic network architectures we employed were UNET and PSPNet. In the beginning, we used PSPNet, which stands for Pyramid Scene Parsing Network. We used the VGG16 as the backbone, the ResNet and DenseNet as the base layers. Further, we used ImageNet as the encoder weights for the network. Our metric for evaluation of this problem was mean IOU as instructed by the competition site Coda Labs and the mean IOU we got for PSPNet was 0 0.42. So according to us this was because of the imbalance of classes in our training data set because the coverage of trees and grounds were much greater than the coverage of water bodies. Another reason could be the seasonal difference in images of our data set. So the second approach was to employ a unit architecture in our model. This time the data pre-processing we did was a bit different from the previous iteration. We sliced our input RGB image into smaller 128 cross 128 images using a stride of 16 and added them to the original data set of 1024 cross 1024 images rescaled down to 128 128 resolution for faster processing. In the network, we used four down sampling layers and four up sampling layers. Total being 10 blocks of layers, including the base of the unit and the output layer. Further, softmax activation function was used to finally segment the input image into the said five classes. The mean IOU obtained for this network model, that is unit, was 0 0.5. In this work, we proposed a single view semantic segmentation of satellite images. Uh, the image were taken um, by Worldview 3 satellite sensors uh, over Florida and Nebraska uh, cities USA. In this research work, two techniques, UNET and PSPNET have been tested over the satellite data sets. Uh, UNET deep learning model has outperformed PSPNET model with mean IOU score of 0 0.50 on the test set in the semantic segmentation challenge. The overall accuracy of the model can be further uh, improved by providing balanced features to train the model for segmentation. In the future, we will try to refine semantic labels and address remaining issues observed in the data. Over the years, the automatic and semi-automatic extraction from the felt imagery has been a field of intensive research. The most sensing is the science of obtaining information from the images which we get from the satellite. Uh, there are many applications of remote sensing in various fields. There are many applications of remote sensing data. We will first start with the application of remote sensing in the coastal areas. It is used to monitor shoreline changes. It is used to track the sediment transport and also it is used to map the coastal areas. It is also used in mapping the oceans. It is used to calculate the temperature of the ocean and the wave, the height of the waves. The one important application which is used in mapping the ocean is to track sea ice. Data can be assessed uh, and the impact of natural disaster can be uh, seen from it. It is used to create preparedness strategies to be used before and after hazardous event. If we take the example of the Hurricane Katrina, uh, the Gulf Coast families were able to determine if their homes were still standing by viewing NOAA aerial photographs online. So it is a huge help for 
tracking is used in different purposes to uh, to segregate the safe and the unsafe zones. It is uh, this the application of remote sensing in the national defence is of utmost importance. Uh, taking way back to the incident of the 9/11, which happened on the World Trade Center, the airborne lidar data was used by emergency response personnel to create three-dimensional models of building structures and the surrounding area, helping personnel relocate original support structures, stairwells, etc. These are just a few examples of activities made possible because of remote sensing. Uh, one of the most recent application uh, is uh, research at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab and the UK's University of Bath believed advanced satellite imagery can be used for more critical purpose, which is analyzing the structures. This has a huge application in analyzing structures like bridges for tiny movements that could be signs of potential collapse. So, using the data of, uh, from the imaginary which we get, we can predict if the bridge will fall or not. And I think this is a huge step in the field of remote sensing.